Hello there, it's Saturday the 3rd of November 2012. A warm welcome along to today's United Kingdom talk. I have news, boys and girls. I have news, boys and girls. As you well know, this year I became a great uncle twice. I am great uncle to baby Evie, little girl. And I am great uncle now to baby George, little boy. Very pleased. Got some photos as well. A couple of photos, those of you that are watching. A couple of photos coming up. You'll see um, George. Okay. George, a little outfit. What's he got on? Let me have a look. Oh, I can't see myself now. One second. I shall describe those of you without vision. There he is. George, with his little, little blue and white stars. He's got, it's like a hooded top. Tiny little George, just a few weeks old. And he's got a, a little lion on the bottom, bottom uh, l like a like a, um, uh, a, a, a a motif on the bottom. Is it a motif? I don't know. And then we have a picture of young Evie. This is Evie, six months old now, and a little pink number with hearts on it. That's that's the bottoms, like a pair of um, sort of uh, leggings, like little trou baby trousers. And she's got a little pink. A pink dress on. I don't look quite like that pink dress myself. I think I might get one of those myself, to be honest. Very nice. And a little black top on, which is a cat. Yes, I think Evie likes cats. A little black cat there with big eyes and a big smiling face. And then we have two more pictures of Evie and George together. Evie in her cot and George placed sort of on top of her. Uh, to, on top and kind of slightly to the left. And Evie's got her hand around George's arms. And Evie's looking a little bit pissed off, to be honest, that someone else has been placed in her... Is it a pram? In her green pram. She's looking a bit pissed off. <laughs> oh, that is funny. That is a funny picture. But she looks rather wonderful. George is, of course, asleep. And there's another picture of them uh, both together. Where's that one gone? There we are. There's another picture of them both together. Uh, a, a kind of a different angle. And uh, Evie is still looking a bit fed up. I don't think she likes sharing her, uh, her pram with other children. So there we are. A few little pictures for you now. You enjoy. Aren't they beautiful? Well, is that the news? No, that's not the news. Guess what? My nephew and his wife, she's having another one, dear. They're knocking them out now, dear. They're, n they're like rabbits. The pair of them are like rabbits. There's another baby on the way. Yes. And she had a scan this week. To oh, is that the cat? Hello, Katie. You want to come and say hello? Come on then, up you come. Coming up. Oh, she does play about. Come on then, girl. Up you come. Katie is in the house. Here's my own personal little baby. Her name's she's not a baby anymore. Are you an old girl now, aren't you? Are you going to say something? Do a meow for me. No? She only kind of meows when she wants to be picked up, don't you, darling, eh? And now you want to be let down again, huh? Cats are very strange creatures, aren't they? They really are. Do you want to go out? OK, let me open the door for you. Go on, off you go, darling. Off you go. <laughs> Such strange creatures. Yes, so in, uh, I think it's May next year... I'm going to become a great uncle all over again. How fantastic is that? In the space of a year, I, mean, I just think it's marvellous. In the space of a year, three little lives have been created by my nieces, uh, by my niece, her husband, and by my nephew and his wife. Three new little lives. How wonderful. Christ knows how much this is going to cost in Christmas and birthday presents, but there you go. That's one of those things, isn't that? <laughs> I shall start saving immediately. I may have to cancel my holiday. I may have to cancel my holiday in February to New York and use the money to buy presents for this lot. Knocking them out left, right and centre they are now. Dear me. <laughs> so that's, that's fantastic news. It really is good news. We don't know if it's going to be a boy or a girl. Um, Stacy likes to know, so I, I, I'm guessing at some point we'll be told whether that's a, a little boy or a girl coming there. All right, so there's my big news of of the week, which I'm pleased to say. <clears throat> now, this little show, I've been um, taking a couple of uh, private 
got uh, uh, emails from a couple of people, boys and girls. Sometimes uh, people want to, I know I read a lot of the emails, well, most of the emails do get read out. But sometimes people send a lot of private emails uh, and basically sort of thing says, I hope you don't mind me saying, but, and the general thing is the shows have got a little bit too long. An hour is a bit too long. Now, I must admit, I did actually think this myself because those of you that watch it on YouTube, we get statistics. Now, I'm never really led by numbers and statistics. However, there's various things, what countries people are listening or watching in, how long they listen for this, that and the other. And the one I was looking at was how long do people watch okay those of you watching on youtube how long do people watch and it tends to be 15 to 20 minutes and then a lot of people lose interest and <clears throat> you get this kind of graph i could have printed that off couldn't i really and show anyway so i haven't done it now. you you get this graph and at the beginning of the graph is naught minutes and at the end is however long the song is the, the show is and they have been sort of an hour so we are say 60 and you get a graph and right at the beginning the graph, uh, the, the the line, number of watchers or viewers is at the bottom. A number of minutes is down the side. So you've got naught at the bottom and naught at the, uh, uh, and number of listeners at the top. And as, it, as the time goes on, you go to five minutes, it comes down a little bit and so on. Now, believe it or not, we do seem to lose 10% of listeners within the first few minutes. So if you're going, go now. That's fine. No problem at all. Goodbye. OK, that's just how it is. But most people seem to watch the first 15 to 20 minutes and then it drops off significantly. In fact, at the very end of the show, we're lucky to still have between 15 and 20% of the people watching that were watching at the beginning. Uh, so... I, 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 and, and, you know, I, I suppose that can't be wrong. How, however, however they work that out, you know, when you're clicking and, and stopping, then it logs something somewhere and then sends me the results. So most people just watch the show for about 20 minutes. And I think they then get, probably then get bored or drop off. They probably fall asleep, boys and girls. <laughs> That's how it is. Now, I'm not sure if it's the same with people that just listen to the show. My guess is it's not. Because you'd be in the car or, or jogging or down the gym or something like that. Listen to me, rab it on. You're not going to keep flicking that switch. Sure. I, but, but I don't know. It's not possible to get those results. So after watching this and listening to a couple of people who said, oh, it's a little bit too long, including my best friends, mind you, uh, Ronnie would say um, that, you know, a minute is too long. He doesn't watch any of the shows. No, no he doesn't watch any of the shows at all. Um, and I was talking to... A drag queen last night, actually, who I was working with, uh, Nikki Vixen is her name. She's been around doing drag shows for years. Real, real professional. She does the mime and does the most wonderful, wonderful costumes. I mean, she really does. Absolutely wonderful costumes. And she was doing a show with uh, her two friends, Titi LeCamp, another top class drag act. And uh, also uh, Millie Turner, who is a drag act as well. They're all marvellous. I, I meant to ask them last night, actually, if they minded me uh, videoing one of their little numbers. And if, if they say yes next week, I'll try and get it and, and show you it. OK. Um, and I was talking to her about this, the fact that people only like about 20 minutes or so. And she said, well, um, uh, and I said, um, I, you know, Ronnie said, why don't you split it up into, into two? You know, instead of just doing one long one, do two. I said, yeah, but then you have to get everything out again and, and set it all up twice a week. She says, she said, no, you don't. All you have to do is record the whole thing in one go, but halfway through, say goodbye and then start again. And then it's all done. You haven't got to set everything up. To us. And I thought about that and I thought, what a good idea. Why didn't I think of that? Because I'm stupid, boys and girls. I am stupid. I am stupid. That's why I didn't think of it. And I thought, what a good idea. So, after taking all that information into account, I think we're going to try that. OK? So, the shows will be a little bit shorter, but then they'll be two a week. I know we've been here before. We got to the point where we're doing a show a day, but that's not going to happen. Believe me, that is not going to happen. So, let's try two a week of 20 to 25 minutes, and we'll see how that goes. Are you OK with that? Your thoughts on that, please? My email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.com.
www.suko.uk. All right. Uh, my heart goes out to those of you that are in New York. Now, I know Suko's in New York, and I did send her a message um, uh, before uh, the hurricane, and I haven't heard from her since, so I'm a little bit concerned with that. Has anyone heard from Suko? Suko is a, she's not so much of a regular correspondent anymore because she does her own thing. But um, I haven't heard from Suko now for a few days, so I'm starting to get a bit concerned. Has anyone heard from Suko? Please do let me know on the email, OK? Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Um, but what a terrible thing. You know, a city like Manhattan. We, we, I can't comprehend it. I know it sounds stupid, but... For a city, uh, you, you know, when you get these tsunamis and the people, uh, terrible, really, people along the coast and that all get drowned and, 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 and trees are destroyed and like, hurricanes and that and everything. I can understand it along the coast and that. When it's somewhere like Manhattan and all those subways are useless at the moment and things like that, I can't believe it, you know. You do wonder, you do wonder how this is all happening. And I know people, they keep going on about the end of the world this year, on the 21st of December. I'm sure you've heard it many times before, because of the end of the Mayan calendar. And all the scientists tell you that. This is all a load, load, uh, load of old baloney. And actually, I, I go along with the scientists. I think, what a load of old rubbish. We've heard it before. The world's going to end da, 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 da. this year. It just happens to be the 21st of December. Every year, the world is going to end. But... You know, my sister said something to me the other day, and she she doesn't come up with much intelligence most of the time, but um, she did. <laughs> she did say to me, "What if they're right?" It went through her mind the other day. What if these people are actually right? Because we've had a few earthquakes recently, haven't we? Not here in the UK, abroad. Just little ones, but enough to send tsunamis going across. And now that super storm, super storm. Do you remember that film where they had that two storms colliding and there was this massive storm? That was New York, wasn't it? Can't think of the name. Was it Independence Day? Was it that? Could have been Independence Day. I don't know. So, well, super storm. It's a few years ago now. Well, that was a superstorm, although it was a lot more fierce than the one that happened in New York this time. But who's to say that the next storm they have will be even worse? And I do find it a little bit worrying. And I'm starting to think now, hang on a minute. You know, all these things happening now, could this be the start of something? Interested your thoughts on that one? Email address chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk Well, tonight, boys and girls, uh, it's a Saturday night tonight and, of course, uh, the closest Saturday to Bonfire Night. Here in the UK, we celebrate Guy Fawkes Night. Guy Fawkes is uh, one of the blokes that tried to blow up the Houses of Parliament years and years and years ago. He failed, uh, but we do... So I don't know why we actually celebrate the night. It's a bit mad, really, celebrating the fact that Parliament nearly got blew up. Mind you, it wouldn't be too bad with some of them in there. Dodgy gits they are, aren't they? Um, so uh, we do celebrate that tonight. Various fire par fireworks parties going off uh, all over the place. I am DJing tonight in a little social club. It's actually the third time I've been there now. In uh, oh, where is it now? In, in, in Harrow, in Harrow, which is uh, uh, just uh, inside Middlesex. Um, uh, I think it's in Middlesex, or was it in London? It was sort of, sort of on the border there. So I'm looking forward to DJing at a firework party. Uh, not outside, I hasten to add. You know, you can, you can just imagine DJing outside, and the kids will start throwing fireworks or sparklers at you, and that sort of thing, wouldn't they? But uh, we do do that every year, although not on the scale. I mean, the, the fireworks I've seen in places like Disney World in Florida and um, on the television, I've seen them in Sydney and the New Year's fireworks. I mean, they're just a man. Nothing like that. OK, you know, these these are just, <laughs> this would just be a few old blokes setting off a couple of, you know, rockets and that going up in the air. Everyone a clap. They'll all grab a hot dog. And then come in and hopefully dance to my tunes all night long. So I'm looking forward to a, a little firework uh, party this evening. Uh, you saw Katie earlier. Actually, I'm glad she came out uh, because a, a dear friend of mine, Rory, 
um, who who comes along to uh, karaoke night sometimes, and he came along Wednesday uh, to my karaoke night at Blushes in London Bridge. I do two, I do two, I'm about to do another karaoke night. The two regular ones at the moment, if you ever want to join us for karaoke in London, are at Belushi's Bar, and that's in uh, Borough High Street in London, every Monday and Wednesday between 10 and 2 o'clock. You'll need photo ID there. It's a great night. A um, lot of people there, all having a good fight. It gets a little bit, bit, little bit rowdy in there. There's no trouble, don't get me wrong, there's no trouble. But sometimes uh, some of the kids do get a little bit rowdy. And I'm about to start a brand new karaoke night, boys and girls. I'm very, very pleased to announce uh, I have managed to get a new Sunday night. And I'll be doing karaoke on Sundays at Blushes again, but this time in Camden Town. They've got a branch or an outlet in Camden Town. Blushes, Camden Town, every Sunday, not tomorrow, but from the 11th of November. OK, Blushes, 48 to 50, Camden High Street, Camden Town, every Sunday from the 11th of November, uh, between 8 p.m., and 12 midnight. So looking forward to that one. And once again, I've been extremely lucky uh, enough to get another job like that. All right. OK, let's uh, do some emails. First of all, I'd like to say hello to Jeffrey. And um, I, I missed, missed this email out last week. We, we, we kind of run out of time. Uh, let me read this. Here we go. And I might become a film star, boys and girls. Um, or at least I, th- I thought that. And then I read a little bit longer into it. I'll tell you what, this, this writing's a bit faint. I wonder where my glasses are. My glasses up there. Just a second. Let's see if I've got my glasses. Oh, I don't know where they are now. <clears throat> oh, come on, glasses. Where are you? Oh, dear. I can't find them. I'll tell you what, it's such a mess, this office. It really is. I look around and I think I'll clean that up. And then I'll pick up something, you see. Oh, hang on, what's this here? Oh, no, an empty, <laughs> an empty glass case. Oh, where are they then? All right, we'll have to struggle on, then, dear. Struggle on. This, this, this office is such a mess at the moment. It really is. But I pick, so, I'll pick something up, like, like the stapler, and I'll go to put it away, and I'll think, oh, I might need that later. And then I'll put it back down. Do you know what I mean? I'm really not a tidy person at all. <clears throat> okay, and uh, hello, Chris. My name is Geoffrey French. I'm the quiz master at the Mayflower Pub in San Rafael, California. Rafael, California. As you know, uh, I do a quiz night uh, on Tuesday nights at the Mayflower in London, in Rotherhive in London, every Tuesday night between 8 and 11. That's a great night. Well, this guy does a quiz at the Mayflower in San Rafael, California. He says that's nestled in the northern end of the San Francisco Bay Area. I write and uh, MC two weekly quizzes at a British pub here in Marin County, a job I fell into accidentally seven years ago and dearly love. I know what you mean, Jeffrey. I love doing the quiz night. I absolutely love it. It's, It's great fun. I travel to the UK just about every year and have spent many an evening at the Mayflower in Rotherhithe, although I have never attended a quiz there. I'm also a filmmaker. My day job is video editing, though I used to produce television many years ago. I'm currently in production on a feature-length documentary about the pub quiz culture. It's a low-budget affair, a labour of love I'm financing myself. Production began here in California during the summer. I hope to focus on the characters that inhibit, inhabit pub quizzes and explore what attracts them to the quiz and keeps them coming back week after week. Additionally, I hope to cover the pub quiz phenomenon in the UK to some extent. To that end, I'm bringing a small crew to London and elsewhere uh, in the UK in January. I would love to film a quiz at the Mayflower in Rotherhithe. Since I first hatched the idea for this project, I thought footage from London's Mayflower would wake a wonderful bookend to the footage we're shooting here in San Rafael's Mayflower. So look, I think I'm going to become a film star, boys and girls. I'm going to be on at the cinema. How exciting is that? Eh? Well, I think it's exciting anyway. I have a friend who lives in Rotherhithe who approached the staff at the Mayflower and spoke to them on my behalf. Unfortunately, the landlord was out of town. His name's Paul, by the way. 
I've since sent him an email explaining what I'm up to and asking if he's something he'd consider letting me do. I've not heard back yet. I believe he's out of the country at the moment. I'll also need your blessing, of course. Google helps me find you. I what? Am I on Google? Oh, how Google, I'm, I'm just everywhere, aren't I? I'm like a virus. I'm like a virus permeating every all the, every little of your nooks and crannies, darling. If if you've got a if you've got a gap somewhere or there's a gash or a crack, I will find it, boys and girls. I will find it and I will seep in there. I really will seep in there like a virus. <laughs> As mentioned, it would be a small crew, myself, a camera operator and an assistant. We would not be using elaborate lighting or large equipment. Our presence would be respectful and as unobtrusive as, unobtrusive as possible. What I'd like to do, <clears throat> if possible, is attend a quiz on a Tuesday night in January and shoot some footage of the quiz in progress. Then, once the quiz is wrapped, do a short interview with yourself and some of the players that evening. If this is something you consider, please let me know. Of course I consider it. Oh, am I going to appear at Odeon cinemas all over the world? Oh, I can't believe people are actually going to pay to see me. He says, oh, I have no firm plans for this project once it's finished, other than the film festival circuit. Oh, so it's not the Odeon then. Oh, how disappointing. But I believe it's an interesting subject and worth my time to try and document and have some fun with along the way. Cheers from Jeffrey, uh, San Rafael, California. So thank you very much uh, for writing there. Um, I did bring this up with Paul, uh, the manager, on Tuesday, actually, um, Jeffrey. And I said, did you receive an email um, from, from someone? He says, oh, I might have done. He said, the problem is you don't realise how many emails I get get here he said I, i've probably missed it and i said so i said to him do you want me to print it off and bring it to you and he said oh yeah if you could do that next week he's a lovely bloke paul i mean he really is so that's what i'll do i'll print off the quiz and uh take it to him okay now i did uh, i love the idea i love the idea of course i i'm gonna pull in your leg of course i know i'm not going to be at the Odeon cinema or you know I don't know, something something with adverts around like the Pearl and Dean thing. I know it's not gonna be like that. But yeah, um that would be really interesting to do that and do a little 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 film. Love to and I'd actually Jeffrey, I'd quite like to meet you. You know, we could have a little bit of a chat about uh, how you do the quiz and what have you. In fact I did write to, um, to back to Jeffrey and ask him how he did his quiz. Uh, and he's replied here, but that's for the next show, boys and girls, OK? Coming up on the next show, I'll read you the other half of that email. There's also a, a nice long email here from Marge. Um, and Jonathan, I think, and Helen and Kath. There's quite a lot more uh, for the next show. I also uh, want to talk about Skyfall and some new jobs. I've got a load of uh, new bookings coming this week uh, for my DJing, so I'm looking forward to and I should tell you all about those things uh, on the next show, which will be on Wednesday, OK? So we're going to have a, a, a shorter show, uh, two shorter shows, one on Saturday and one on Wednesday for the moment, OK? Uh, if you'd like to join in by email at any point, please feel free to do so. Talk about anything I've talked about or indeed... Um, do tell me, are you in New York? Were you affected uh, by the hurricane? I would love to know. Please tell me what happened to you. My email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Thanks so much for watching and listening. I'll see you for the next show on Wednesday. Bye-bye. <laughs>